Let's continue our work with integration by looking at some integrals that involve inverse trig functions. So over here I've written the indefinite integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx is inverse tangent x plus c. Okay, that means that it came from this derivative formula. If y is equal to inverse tangent x, then the derivative of y with respect to x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Likewise, with the um, chain rule, if I have y as inverse tangent u, where u is a function of x, then the derivative of y with respect to x is 1 over 1 plus u squared du dx. So what I want to do is see if I can't derive these formulas here real quickly, because that's the way I remember them. I can't always remember what the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared is, but I usually go back to the trig functions and do the derivations. So look here, if I have y is equal to inverse tangent x, then that means that tangent y is equal to x. That's the relationship between inverse functions. If y is equal to inverse tangent x, then tangent of y is equal to x. Now I'll just differentiate implicitly. The derivative of tangent y with respect to x is secant squared y times the derivative of the argument, which is the derivative of y with respect to x, and then the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. So if I solve this for dy dx, what I'll get is this. The derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 1 over secant squared y. Okay, and that's correct. That is the derivative of y with respect to x, but the problem is when we differentiate with respect to x, we'd like our derivative to be in terms of x, and this turns out to be in terms of y. So we, what we need to do is find some way to get this written in terms of x. So let me show you my little um, Pythagorean identity from trigonometry. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, correct? Okay, if I divide both sides of this by cosine squared theta, I end up with 1 plus sine squared over cosine squared tangent squared theta is equal to 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. So secant squared of theta is always 1 plus tangent squared theta. That means that 1 over secant squared y must be 1 over 1 plus tangent squared y, right? 1 over 1 plus tangent squared y. And look, tangent of y is equal to x. So this is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that's where that formula for that derivative comes from. It's really very simple. If y is equal to inverse tangent x, then tangent y is equal to x. Differentiate implicitly, and I can solve for dy dx and find out it's 1 over secant squared y. But the problem is that's in terms of y. We want it in terms of x. So I just go back to some real simple trigonometry. One of the first things we learned in trigonometry, this Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. Divide so that you get the tangent squared right here. So I divide by cosine squared. 1 plus tangent squared theta is secant squared theta. That allows me to take this secant squared y right here and write it as 1 plus tangent squared y. And then I can go back to the substitution and say, well, tangent y is equal to x, so that's 1 over 1 plus x squared. So if you're curious as to where these formulas come from, they're very easy to derive like this. And what's interesting about them is they, they have a relationship between an algebraic function and an inverse trig function. And that's kind of an interesting relationship right there. And it turns out that integrals like this come up from time to time in application problems, and we need to find an antiderivative for them. It turns out just to be an inverse tangent. Let's do another problem. All right, this time let's just start with our inverse trig function and see if we can't derive the derivative and integrals formulas that go with it. So here I have y is equal to the inverse sine of x. Okay, let's write that in terms of a sine. So what I'll say is this, sine y is equal to x. Again, that's the relationship between inverse functions. If y is the inverse sine of x, then the sine of y must be equal to x. Now I'll do the same thing I did last time, just differentiate implicitly. And so I'll get the derivative of sine is cosine y times the derivative of y with respect to x. That's just using my chain rule, right? 
and then the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Okay, I need to solve this for dy dx, so dy dx is going to be equal to 1 over cosine y. Now I have the same problem here that I had last time. This is the correct derivative, but it's given in terms of y, not in terms of x. I'd like it to be in terms of x. So over here, I'll take that same Pythagorean identity I had before, and I'll solve for cosine theta. Cosine theta will be equal to plus or minus square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. You remember doing this in trigonometry a lot, right? Plus or minus. So that means that this is going to be equal to 1 over plus or minus square root of 1 minus sine squared y. Okay, now how about the plus or minus? Well, I don't have to worry about it in this case because there's a restriction on this inverse trig function here. Remember that this is only good if negative pi over 2 less than or equal to y less than or equal to pi over 2. So y in this case is an angle in quadrant 4 or quadrant 1. y goes from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So that means that cosine y is what? Well, in quadrants 4 and quadrants 1, the cosine of any angle in there is always a positive number. So I don't need to worry about the plus or minus right here. It's just going to be plus. Okay, 1 minus sine squared y. Okay, sine of y is equal to x. So I end up with 1 over square root 1 minus 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, there's my derivative formula, dy dx is equal to this. If y is equal to inverse sine x, then its derivative is 1 over square root 1 minus x squared. And that means that the indefinite integral of 1 over square root 1 minus x squared dx must be inverse sine of x plus c. So again, I have another one of these formulas that gives me a relationship between an algebraic function and an inverse trig function like this. Okay, let's see if we can use these formulas. Okay, this time I have a definite integral from 0 to 0.5 of dx over 1 minus x squared. Okay, it has the uh, form of that inverse sine uh, integral or antiderivative, so I'll just write this as inverse sine of x evaluated between 0 and 0 0.5. So that's going to be inverse sine of 0 0.5 minus inverse sine of 0. Okay, so this is the angle whose sine is 0.5, that's between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Okay, inverse sine of 0.5, the angle whose sine is 0.5, 30 degrees, which I'll write in radian measure as pi over 6, minus the angle whose sine is 0. Well, that's easy, that's 0. So this definite integral just comes out to be pi over 6, and I use my formula that uh, gives me an antiderivative of inverse sine. Let's try another one. Another definite integral here from 1 to square root 3 of 6 over 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, well, this constant right here can cross the integral symbol, so I'll just have 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Well, that's going to be my inverse tangent formula. So this comes out to be 6 inverse tangent of x evaluated between 0, whoops, not 0, but 1 and square root 3. So that's going to be 6 inverse tangent square root 3 minus 6 inverse tangent of 1. So 6 times the angle whose tangent is square root 3. Well, when I think of this, I think of tangent as sine over cosine. Okay, and I want to end up with a square root 3. So sine over cosine square root 3 over 2 over 1 half. I look at it that way, and then I know that the sine must be square root 3 over 2, so that means that my angle must have been 60 degrees or pi over 3. So pi over 3 minus 6 times the angle whose tangent is 1. Well, tangent, remember, is sine over cosine, and sine and cosine are equal at 45 degrees or pi over 4. So I'll write it like that, pi over 4. Okay, 6 times pi over 3, uh, that's going to be 2 pi minus 6 times pi over 4, okay, that's 3 pi over 2. What do I have here? 4 pi over 2 minus 3 pi over 2 looks like pi over 2.